Hey, do you need some help setting goals and figuring out a plan to make this year your best year yet? Listen, I've got you. Go to christywright.com slash goals to download my free goal setting guide. I'm going to ask you a few simple but powerful questions that are going to help you know what's going on right now so you can set goals that are right right now. Go to christywright.com slash goals to get your free goal setting guide today. That's christywright.com slash goals. Hey everyone, and welcome to Get Your Hopes Up. I'm Christy Wright, and I'm so glad you're here. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by power of the Holy Spirit. Our God is the God of hope, and He wants you to overflow with hope. So let's start our week by getting our hopes up again. Today, we're talking about discernment and decision-making. How can you be sure that you're doing what God wants you to do. All of us want to do what God wants us to do, but how in the world are we supposed to know what God wants us to do? Now, in an earlier episode of Get Your Hopes Up, I taught you specifically how to hear from God, how to know if God is speaking to you or not. But we're going to continue that conversation today because this is one of the things that I think can be really difficult as Christians because we want so badly to do God's will. And maybe God is even speaking to us and we think He's leading us in this direction, but we're not sure. Now, let's remember, when I was leaving Ramsey, which I talked about in the beginning of this new show, Get Your Hopes Up, I told you all I was 100% sure, 100%, 100, 100 as the kids say these days, 100 emoji, 100%, y'all. God basically did everything short of sending Gabriel to escort me out of there. It was eerie and undeniable how present God was and how clear he was that I was supposed to do that thing. But let me say this. That is not normal. That is not normal. That is not how he leads me every day. It's probably not how he leads you every day. I think, honestly, God knew how hard that would be for me, so I think he gave me extra support to help me follow through with this hard thing. But most of the time, y'all, it's not like that. I have medium decisions and small decisions every single day that I don't have that kind of clarity on, and I just have to decide anyway. And it's hard and confusing and exhausting. Y'all, it's really difficult to process and discern and decide on all these small and medium decisions and maybe even some big decisions that we have. Maybe you've got something right now. Maybe you've got something you're wrestling through right now. And I love, I love how we say that as Christians, don't you? We'd say wrestling. It's so accurate though. It's so visual and visceral and true. This process of discernment really is a wrestling It's hard, it's exhausting, it's messy, it's sweaty. Think of what that decision is for you right now. It doesn't have to be big or major. It can be small, medium. Maybe it is big. Maybe for you it's moving. Should we move or not? Maybe it's a new job. Should I take that job offer? Maybe it's, should I start a new business or or ministry that God has put on my heart? Maybe it's adoption or trying for another baby. Maybe it's just an expense that you're not sure if you need to actually have or a trip and you're not sure if you should take it. Maybe it's just if you should speak up or shut up in this situation. A question, to be honest, I'm not real sure I know the answer to most cases, y'all. Whatever that decision is that you're facing right now, I want you to think of it. I want you to bring it to the front of your mind as we go through this episode. Deciding if you should do it or not is hard, isn't it? You've got a ton of variables to consider. You've got hundreds of thoughts about it, and many of those thoughts are competing. You could talk yourself into it, or you could talk yourself out of it just as easily. You could make a case either way. You might even feel anxious when you think about that decision. You might have input from other people like family and friends that weigh in on this decision that you're trying to calculate and consider as well. How in the world are you supposed to be sure that this is what you're supposed to do or not do with all those competing thoughts and variables and factors to consider? How how can you become confident and positive and certain so that you can go through with this fearlessly? How can you get to that place where you are 100% sure that this is what you're supposed to do? Are you ready for it? You can't. You can't. 
Y'all, when you're talking about options and outcomes that you can't see or fully control, when you're talking about a supernatural, invisible God guiding you, by the way, and when you're talking about risk and unknowns, you can't be 100% sure. You can't. But you know what? You don't have to be. You don't have to be 100% sure to do it. If your standard is 100% sure, certainty, perfection, then you'll never do anything. You'll sit around and you'll wait for more signs, but no matter how many signs God gives you, it will never be enough because, y'all, it's a sign. It's a clue. It's a wink. It's not proof. It's just a sign. And it'll never be enough if you're waiting for 100% certainty. If 100% certainty is your bar before you'll move, you will stay stuck the rest of your life and you will miss out on the amazing opportunities and blessings and adventure that God has for you. You'll never be 100% sure when you're talking about a life with God. So you may be thinking, great, what am I supposed to do? Just flip a coin? Ask the magic eight ball? Do any, mini, miny, mo to decide? No, we're not gonna do that either. We're not going for apathy. We're not gonna sit back and act indifferent like we don't care or can't participate. God wants us to fully participate within our finite understanding and logic. He still wants us to engage and participate within our capacity. So what does that look like? I'll tell you what it looks like for me in case maybe it looks like this for you too. For me, it looks like 70 to 80%. That's right. I'm not shooting for 100%, y'all. I try to get to about 70 to 80% sure. Now, sometimes I might be at 60, and honestly, sometimes it feels like I am screeching by at 51%, but I just try to get a little more sure than a guess. A little more sure than 50-50, than the flip of a coin. Sometimes this is as soft and elusive as a nudge and an inkling and a pull and a, I think this might be God. Now, other times, it might be 80 or 90%. It's being pretty sure, but not 100%. Now, I know for all the perfectionists and control freaks out there, this is not good news. You don't want 80%. You want 100%. I get it. But I have to tell you something. That's not faith. That's not faith. 100% sure in the natural here on earth is not faith. That is walking by sight. And like it or not, that is not what we are created for, and it's not what God calls us to. He calls us to walk by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we live by faith, not by sight. So when you get as sure as you can on something, whether that is 80% or 60% or 51%, you know what happens? Faith fills the gap. Faith fills the gap. Faith fills in the remaining 20% or 40% or 49% that you're missing, that you're not sure of. Faith fills the gap between your calculations and certainty and the action you need to take. Faith does that. Faith does. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Faith does that. Faith brings the confidence where the facts and the proof fall short. Somebody stitch that on a pillow. I want to say it again because I need you to get it. Faith brings the confidence where the facts and the proof fall short. We walk by faith, not by sight. So you're not trying to get to 100%, y'all. You're not trying to get to perfection and certainty here on earth in the natural. You're trying to get a little more sure than a guess. You're trying to get to 60, 70, 80% sure this is God from the signs he's given you, the proof he's given you, the words he's spoken to you, the affirmations you already have that you know are him. And he's going, act, child, act on your 70%. Let faith fill the gap for the remaining 30. So let's talk about how you can do that. How can you walk by faith in a practical way? There's three things specifically you can do that I want to give you as takeaways today. Number one, seek God through prayer in his word. Don't roll your eyes at me. You just did. I saw you. Even though you're in the car, you rolled your eyes at me. Listen to me. I'm saying seek God because when you seek God, you will know what to do. He will not let you go wrong. He will give you the affirmations you need. And then it is your job to let those affirmations be enough. You ask for a sign. He gives you a sign. Let that sign be enough. Do not ask for another sign. 
Let his affirmations be enough. Seek him through prayer and through his word, the Bible. And when you seek him, you will find him. He is not hiding from you. He wants to be found by you. He wants to speak to you and be heard by you. But it is up to you after you seek him to acknowledge that you have found him, that he has spoken, that this is what he wants you to do. And most of the time, it's not 100%. It's 70%. It's feeling a little bit crazy going, you know what? I think God's calling me to move. I think God's calling me to adopt. I think God's calling me to start this ministry. I think God's calling me to start this business. I think God's calling me to take this job offer. I'm not 100% sure because there's risk involved and I'm walking by faith here on the earth and I can't see how it's going to turn out. But you know what? I'm about 70%. I feel like I've got 70% worth of certainty and I'm going to let my faith fill the gap of the 30 Seek God through prayer in his word, and he will not let you go wrong. If you're not seeking him, he will leave you to your own consequences of your choices. But if you seek him, he is a good father. He will not drop you. He will not pull the rug out from under you. He will be found by you, and he will guide you. But it will still look and feel like 70%. It will look and feel like less than certainty because we're walking by faith. Number two, seek wise counsel. Seek wise counsel. Seek people that you trust, godly people, people that are believers, people that walk by the Spirit, people that discern God's voice. Seek their counsel on this decision. I love running things by my husband because my husband is wired so different than me. My husband is cautious. He is thoughtful. He is patient. He takes his time. I am none of those things. I can be reckless and spontaneous and impulsive. And he thinks things through. And so I will often bring things to him that I feel like the Lord is teaching me or telling me or showing me. And obviously, as my husband, these are decisions we make together. So I have to come to him regardless. We're going to make this decision together, even if it's something the Lord spoke to me as he brings things to me when the Lord speaks to him. But you can seek family, friends, community at your church and run this idea by them. Now, I want to give a quick disclaimer on this one. When I talk about hearing from God and I post about it on social media, people always, always, always come back with seek wise counsel, seek wise counsel, seek wise counsel. Yes, it is in God's word. It is biblical. Yes. And, and there are times that God will call you unto himself and no one gets it. There are times that God will give you a word and you take that word to people and no one gets it. But you know that God gave you that word. You know that God called you to do that thing. And God is doing something in you between you and him and you trust him. Now, he will never lead you to do something that is contrary to his word. He will never lead you to do something that goes against his character as we find in his word. But if he leads you to move and everyone in your neighborhood doesn't think you should move, he may just not have given that message to them and they're sad that their friend is leaving. That's okay. They can be sad. You can seek wise counsel, but know that there are times that God will call you unto himself and he will ask you to do something where the only voice in the wilderness is his. There are no other voices. There are no other affirmations. And he's going, will you follow me? Will you leave your nets? Will you leave your friends? Will you leave the comfort of affirmations on social media? Will you leave the comfort of your best friend cheering you on? And will you trust my voice and my voice alone? So yes, seek wise counsel. But know that there will be times that maybe even good Bible-believing Christians don't get it. And they don't get it not because they don't care. And they don't get it not because it's wrong. They don't get it because they're not supposed to get it. As the meme on Instagram going around these days is, (laughs) the call is not a conference call. It's a call for you and you alone. So definitely seek wise counsel, but no, they may not always get it. I actually um, felt the Lord speak something to me, and then it was a pretty ridiculous conversation with the Lord, to be honest. Like, I felt crazy. It was one of those where you're like, am I making this up? Because this feels crazy. And so I come downstairs and I, I say to my husband, hey, I just felt the Lord speak to me about something and I want to process it with you because I want you to help me discern it, okay? I want you to help me discern it is what I said to him. And then I proceeded to tell my husband every single thing the Lord said to me. And I even asked the Lord when I was when I was having this conversation, which I know y'all think I'm crazy. It's fine. I'm just, I'm just telling you, if you ask God to speak, he will speak. 
It's our job then to believe him when he does. And I said to the Lord when I was praying, I said, Lord, how do I know this is you and not my own crazy thoughts? And he said to me, this is the steady voice you know. But apparently that wasn't enough that God said that to me. So I ran downstairs and I told Matt everything that God had said. And then when I finished waiting for Matt's answer to help either validate or invalidate this conversation with God, here was my husband's response. He said, well, Christy, you just had an entire conversation with God. I'm not sure what there is to discern. Who didn't Jesus just speak through my husband to put me in my place? There is no further discernment needed, Christy. Thank you for seeking wise counsel. Thank you for looping in your husband. But what you're really doing is doubting because I've already told you this is the steady voice you know and you run downstairs in the name of discernment and your husband is just gonna tell you, what is there to discern? You just had a conversation. Oh my goodness, even that was an affirmation. In one sentence, God affirmed the conversation I had with him and convicted me and put me in my place. Won't he do it? So first, seek God through prayer and his word. Second, seek wise counsel, knowing that sometimes they won't get it. And sometimes, I don't know, you might just get put in your place like I did. But third, and this is the big one, act. Act. Act as a part of your discernment and decision-making. If you're going the wrong way, y'all, God will steer you. He will steer you to go the right way. Some of you are waiting for perfect discernment, 100% clarity and certainty until you act. God will actually help you flesh out your discernment. God will give you more clarity as you act. Action is a part of your discernment. We walk by faith, not by sight. Part of that is taking a step. Taking a step of action, taking a step of faith. And when you take that step, he shows you the next step. He lights the next step. The lamp unto your feet. He lights what you're supposed to do next when you've taken the first step, but you can't see five steps from now because you won't take the first step. And some of you are waiting to see all the steps. You're waiting for a foolproof plan until you do the thing. And because you never get a foolproof plan in a walk with God, in life of faith, you never do it. Take action. What action, Christy? Any action? Any first step? What is a first step? Maybe for you, a first step is Googling some information about this ministry that you got on your heart. Is there something similar out there you can learn from? Is there something you could get ideas from? Maybe for you, it is literally a Google search. Maybe for you, it is looking up the adoption process. That process seems so overwhelming and you know people that have done it, but man, it it just feels like too much for you. That, That whole process seems overwhelming. Maybe for you, you just Google adoption process. And that step of faith fuels you and gives clarity and gives discernment for what the second step should be. You cannot know the second step until you take the first one. I got to tell you all, when I um, felt compelled to lead this Easter basket initiative for Covenant School here in Nashville, I had no idea what I was doing but I just did what I felt like I was supposed to do one step at a time. I started by creating a Google Doc for Covenant families to sign up for Easter baskets before I had a single volunteer, before I had a location to sort them in, before I had a second location because I didn't know the response was gonna be so crazy successful. I started with a Google Doc. That's what I started with. And when that Google Doc began to fill up, God showed me the second step the volunteers. And when I had the volunteers, God showed me and provided for me the location one step at a time. If you want to discern what God's will is for your life, if you want discernment in your decision-making, believe it or not, part of the discernment process is action. It is taking steps of faith to get more clarity and know what the next steps should be. These are three things that you can do to walk by faith. I want to remind you of something, friend. You are a child of God, and you are made for life with God. Life with God does not make sense here on this earth, so stop trying to logic your way through life. This is not about logic. It's about faith. Getting 100% sure before you do something isn't the goal. Shoot for 70 to 80 if you can, but regardless of where you land, take action and let faith fill the gap. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining me for my new show, Get Your Hopes Up. I'm so excited to hang out with you every Monday to help you get to know God, get closer to Him, and get your hopes up again. 
Be sure to share this episode on Facebook and Instagram to help other people get their hopes up as well. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast channel so you never miss a new show. And then I'll see you next week for another new episode of Get Your Hopes Up. 